What's it like to work on the train at Silver Dollar City? Let me let you in on a little bit of information, history, and what it's like to work on it. The train at Silver Dollar City is one of the oldest rides in the park. In fact, it was actually opened up within a year or two after the park itself opened. So the train has been at Silver Dollar City for a long time. And it's really still, even all these years later, one of the centerpieces of the park. If you ask people what they go to ride at Silver Dollar City, the train is usually in the top three to five choices. I tell people all the time, if you haven't been on the train at Silver Dollar City, you haven't been to Silver Dollar City. It was a great honor to be able to work there and follow in the history of so many people that were before us. Pete and Jack Hershen actually put the train in way back at the beginning to help give people waiting to tour the cave something to do. They actually started off with one little engine and a car would take people out into the woods. Now this poor little engine didn't have a whole lot of horsepower and so it would actually have to stop out in the woods for a little bit and build up enough steam to be able to get all the way back to the depot up top of the hill. So what did they do while they were waiting 10 minutes to be able to build all that steam up? They decided to stage train robbery. And the train robbery you see today still has a lot in common with those original train robberies back then, including some of the lines. It has changed some over the years. The engines themselves, for example, have changed. They do still actually have that original engine, but it doesn't run anymore. Last time I was at the park, it was parked next to the roundhouse. They'd repainted it, and they are hoping to get it moved into the park to let people see at some point. It was still sitting behind the fence last time I was there. Since then, they now run three engines. One from Germany and two from Czechoslovakia that were actually built in the 1940s. And they worked at the ship ports to be able to move things around there. Within the last couple of years, they've actually bought a couple more engines to be able to help provide parts and get one fixed up, but those aren't running yet. So they're still running the original three. Engine 13, engine 76, I loved 76. Great little engine, and 42. Those are the engines they run around the park. The trains themselves, they actually have two trains. When I started, they had just started a program of replacing some of the cars in those trains, and they actually had only one modern car on the train at the time. When I left, they had managed to replace one whole train, so you had a new train and an old train, and replacing one car every year. As they changed it over, it created a little bit of mixed feelings for us because the old train was very comfortable for us conductors. It actually had a padded seat on the back that you can kind of sit back in a little bit, had a great clip that would hold the gun in place, had open windows in the back so you could interact with the guests a little bit easier, and it had stairs going off the sides. So that way when you stopped for the robbery, you would just step down and then when you came back, you would step up. Well, when they built the new trains, it caused a little bit of frustration is probably the best word. We went from having a padded seat to a hardwood bench, which for a ride or two isn't a big deal. But when you ride the train 10 to 15 times a day on a hard bench with all that shaking, it hurt after a while. Instead of having our stairway going down, we actually had a vertical ladder, which was kind of a steep climb. And when you're trying to climb a vertical ladder with a gun and get up into your seat, it was awkward and there were a number of other little things and so we had some frustration at the beginning as we transitioned into this and gradually over time they began to fix things and improve them for example the bench the very first time they ran this bench around the bench was so short that i couldn't see over the ledge of the window the window in the back came about right there on me and i couldn't see the guests so i would actually have to ride on the back as a conductor kind of propped standing up so that way i could even see the people on the train and keep them safe not a good thing. Within a month or so, though, they had actually taken that bench off, added some extensions onto the legs, and raised it up so we could at least sit while we were riding. Even now, in the last couple of years, they've still been making improvements, and they recently added on some actual steps going off the back of the train, as you can see in this picture, and make it a little bit easier for the conductors to be able to get off and on the train when they're getting ready to do the robbery. So a process of adjustments as they went along. Each train will actually hold up to about 250 people. On a slower day, they'll typically run a train every 30 minutes or so, on the top of the hour and on the half. Once it starts getting a little busier, though, and it was kind of a rule of eye, for lack of a better way to describe it, 
if we were leaving for a train and we'd left more than, say, 20 or 30 people behind who couldn't fit on the train, at that point we were thinking, okay, it's about time to speed up our schedule a little bit so we can get more people on. And we would start running every 20 minutes instead of 30. On busy days, sometimes that happened with the very first train of the day. The only time we would run two trains is during Christmas. And that's because the crowds at Christmas were so huge that if we tried to run one train, which occasionally happened because of mechanical issues, the line for the train could easily be an hour, hour and a half long or more. With two trains, we could typically keep that line at about 30 minutes or less, but we'd run the number of trains based on how many people were there. So basically, two trains on busy days at Christmas, one train the rest of the time. Every 30 minutes if it's a slower day, or every 20 minutes if it's a fast day or a busy one. And the 20 minute means it's a shorter train robbery show. So if you've ever been riding the train and you're going, wait, they didn't do ma. Well, it's probably because you're on a 20 minute schedule. And that's one of the parts that gets cut out. If you got to do a short show, something's got to go and ma's usually it. So that's one of the reasons some of the shows would change occasionally is because you're trying to do a shorter show to be able to get the train back quicker. On a normal day when I was there, we would work with two conductors on the train and two robbers out in the woods. The two conductors would kind of trade off and you'd go one train on and one train off. So you're riding for one train, spieling all the way around and doing the robbery show. And then you would get back and you would take care of the depot, make sure that everything was fine. Once the depot got full, you close the gate. You'd give people a safety spiel ahead of time, make sure everything was still clean and working right. You'd wave in the train when it came back. And if you had time and you could find it, you might spend five minutes to get a quick drink. Try and shove a quick bite in your mouth, or if you really, really had to go, you'd run down the hill real quick to the bathroom that was down there, go, and then get right back up again before the train came back. It made for some interesting relays through the woods sometimes. <laughs> that was during the day. Of course, our day would actually start before the park opened. We would get out there, and we would have to blow everything down, clearing up the train station from any trash that might have been left the night before, make sure the trash barrels were all emptied and put into place, get everything clean, look and spick and span, clean the gun. Once the engineers brought the train around to us, we would actually load the robbers onto the train and one conductor would hop onto the back and he would ride the train around for a maintenance run. This was basically to make sure that the train was operating right, the tracks were clear, to drop off the robbers and get them ready for the day, and to make sure that everything was working well. We would occasionally have something where, say, the sound system didn't work or might hear noise and it was rare, but it was a chance to make sure that everything was working properly and safely before you ran into a problem when there might have been guests on it. What was really nice on busier days when we would actually have three conductors. That was great because with your third conductor, you could have a conductor on the train, a conductor running the station and depot, and your third one could take an actual break as we needed it, as opposed to having to pull somebody from another position somewhere, which is what we'd have to do on days when we only had two, We'd have to have somebody in what was called labor pool come down and wave trains in for us and run it for about an hour so our conductors could get a break. Or maybe even pull a robber up to the station and work there for a little bit. We always liked it when we had an extra conductor because we didn't like having to take people away from other places. So having a third conductor was a great thing when we were able to do that. And working the depot itself was a lot of fun. I played with the kids. I would occasionally bring in some little magic tricks and do that with them and tease them and joke around and play with the guests. Of course, if you've seen my dumb questions at Silver Dollar City, that was when we did that. The off conductor would also go around and we had a clock up at the front of the depot and he'd always make sure that that was set for the time of the next train leaving. And that made for some interesting conversations when you'd be standing next to it and people would walk up, what time's the next train? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> but it made for a great opportunity to be able to play around with the guests and have a lot of fun with them that way. One of the th other things that I really enjoyed, at least when I started, was the gift shop that we used to have. The old depot, way back in the old days, actually used to charge people money for the train, and they had a ticket booth there. Well, they turned the ticket station into the actual gift shop. And when I was there, it sold t-shirts and toy trains and books and Things like this shirt, in fact, which is where it came from. Well, after a little while, they decided that it wasn't making enough money, not even selling candies for people to buy to give to the robbers. They decided to close the store, which was really sad as far as I was concerned, especially with what they replaced it with. They brought in the photography company and said, hey, let's start getting pictures of people in front of the train. And their first place they put this picture was actually in the station. And it just caused 
chaos sometimes. Eventually, they pulled it out, and then they put it into the where the old store was, and that's where it is now. And, and I understand the pictures, but for a while, it was a big source of frustration for all of us guys on the train. I don't know if there was one of us that liked it. And as a photographer at Disney, I understood why it was there. Great place to make money. I just didn't like how they did it. They would actually cause everybody trying to come into the train to have to stop, pose for a picture, and it would just disrupt our operations. Most of the photographers and the people working were wonderful. We got along with almost all of them. It was just the job that they were doing was tough. And we eventually, after a few months, got a system in place where we were able to do our job and they were able to do theirs. I wasn't disappointed when they pulled it out of the train station. We did have one photographer in particular that was a major pain to all of us guys on the train, but I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> we won't go into details on them. It was one of those things as a photographer at Disney, I looked at and I said, you know, there are so many better ways to do this than what you're doing. Their manager there, he wasn't exactly open to input because he knew better. I don't think they ever sold as many pictures as they really could. I don't think they're selling as many pictures as they can now. That's my opinions, not theirs. And, you know, unfortunately, I think they've kind of ruined the flow into the train depot with it. Maybe one day they'll get it figured out. It's a great place to get a picture, just not how they have it set up. One of the other things as a conductor that we did, too, was we got very good at being able to manage our crowds. We would be able to get the line in a certain place so it wouldn't block places. As we let people into the depot, we got extremely good at being able to estimate how many people were in that depot compared to how many people we get on the train. Again, the train seats about 250 people, and I could get that depot set up so I would have between 10 and 20 empty seats on the train before I closed the gate and said, okay, folks, Wait out here, we'll see how many of you we can get. We would do our safety spiel for everybody in the station, get all of them onto the train first, and then we would count up how many empty seats we had, and we would send the people that were in line straight to those seats and get as many of them on the train as we could. And we got it down pretty good where we could unload a train, load the train, and get it out within about four minutes, which at Christmas time, when you're running two trains, we would actually time it from the point that we stopped that train we hit a timer for six minutes, and within that six minutes, we were leaving. We would unload the train completely, get all of our disabled guests who waited at the back gate, get all of them onto the train, do the safety spiel, get everybody else onto the train, camp to, count the empty seats, fill the empty seats, close the gates, and we were ready to roll six minutes. That's a lot of people to push through in that time, and we had it down. It made for a lot of fun, but you could tell who was good because, like I said, we could almost nail that depot down to one train almost exactly. And then at the end of the day, our last train typically was 30 minutes before the park closed. First train was 30 minutes after the park opened to let people have time to get down to the train and be able to actually get on board. The last train was 30 minutes before park closed. And so our procedures for that train were a little different. We always did a short show on the last train of the day. We would get people into the depot and we would deliberately leave the number of people in the depot just a little shorter than normal and close the gate because we want to make sure we had everybody on that train. If they were in the depot, they were getting on one way or the other and we didn't want to leave anybody behind. We would leave people outside of the depot and we would try to get as many on as we could and we again knew about where our, the end of our line was going to be and so if we were getting close to that, we would start letting people know, hey folks, next train is going to be the last train of the day. It's going to be close as to whether we can get you on or not, but I can't promise you a seat. And if there's no seat, you're not on, and there's not another train after this one. We didn't leave too many people behind that way, but we get some that would try to wait and not quite make it. Every now and then we get somebody very upset. But I waited all day to ride the train, and now you're leaving without me. Well, don't wait to the last minute to ride what you've been waiting all day for. If you'd really waited, you would have been actually waiting at the train, not somewhere else. Once we got that train full, we'd close the gate with nobody in the depot. Again, didn't want to leave anybody in that depot that we would have to chase out and say, sorry, train's closed, I know you're in here, but now you got to get out. We didn't want to do that. So we'd get everybody on that we could. The people that were waiting outside the gate, we'd send them in to fill in em any empty seats until we had either filled the train or gotten rid of our line, close the gate, and that last train would leave. We've got 30 minutes, and in that 30 minutes... We had to load the train, make sure it was full, close the gates, get the train out, do the short show, get the train back, unload the train, make sure the depot was all cleaned and cleared and everything was fixed for the end of the day, 
conductor would get back on the train and it would ride out. It would pick up the robbers, stop out there, make sure the robbers were all set for the end of the day. And then we would run the train over to the roundhouse where they would park the train, shut it down. And the conductor and the robbers would then hop off the back, walk up through the maintenance area, and they would clock out. You'd be tired because on a normal day, a conductor could do anywhere from seven to a dozen trains, depending upon how busy we were and how long the day was. It would wear on your throat. That's one of the reasons we would take a train off is to just to give our throats rest from talking so much. So it would be a long day, an exhausting one, both physically and mentally, because performing can wear you out mentally. But it was so much fun. Had a blast during my time there. If I could go back right now, I'd do it again. Um, I would love to be out there robbing trains once more. So who knows? Maybe someday. But that's a look at a little bit of behind the scenes of the train and what it was like for us. I had a great time. Hope you had a good time watching this. Next time you do get to ride the train Silver Dollar City, now you have a little better idea of what those guys in the black and white are doing. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your comments below if you've ever seen the train or if you have a question perhaps about that I didn't answer. I'd love to hear from you. So what's it like to be on the... Ugh, nope. I play with the kids. I would occasionally bring in some occasional... One of the other things that as a... We would treat the train... Ugh.